Hello, it's that time again, YouTuber's Secret Santa. This is where a bunch of maker YouTubers over the past three years have been uh, sending random presents to each other. So the first time around for me, I made a triple headed long Furby for the Hacksmith and I got sent some musical shoes by Kids Invent Stuff. And then last year I made a keyboard that was playable by Cats for a Stephanie Explains It All. And then Colin first sent me the amazing bass coat. Well, that brings us on to this year. I have to make something for this old Tony. This old Tony being a magical pair of hands that is able to I'll talk go, somehow go, go. and you know, make some impressive metal working finger majiggy. So I've been challenged to make something that these hands will hopefully appreciate for Christmas. Being somebody that traditionally makes pretty dodgy music making machines, not knowing the musicality of this old Tony, I figured I'd try and make something that wasn't super musical, but it still made a bit of noise. So if you watched any of my videos in the past year, you may notice that I went on a little bit of a diversion into antiquated electromechanical finger majiggies. It started back in April when I made a sequencer completely out of relays, and that sort of wetted my whistle, and oh my god, it all sort of went downhill after that, to the point that I pretty much built a small villager's telephone exchange into the museum. Oh my god, what's happened? But the main thing I want to take away from this diversion that I've had is the wonderful engineering that goes into these obsolete and antiquated devices. And it's completely different to modern electronics because you can actually see the electronics doing its thing. This old Tony looks like a pair of hands that would appreciate the craftsmanship behind some of these electromechanic devices. Recently I found a batch of these things, they're new old stock uni selectors that are dated all the way back to 1965. Let's open it up first. So at the bottom we have an electromagnet. When it energizes, it attracts this. If you look closely right here, you'll see there's a ratchet and pull. When the electromagnet energizes, it forwards the ratchet. Right here are a bunch of electrical contacts. And here's a bunch of armatures that will actually select between all of the contacts. So every time it forwards one, these armatures connect to a different contact. So let's put some voltage across this electromagnet. Ooh. We can see the ratchet and pull with this angle. Then on the other side, you can see it selecting through all of the points. Ooh, but that isn't all. It's got a little trick up its sleeve that makes it a heck of a lot more usable. So if you look at these two pieces of metal, they're currently connected. So if you send electricity through them, well, it will make a complete connection. However, when I push on the electromagnet, these two pieces of metal split apart and it breaks the connection. This means that if we wire, ow! This means that if we wire one of those pieces of metal, like this, not, not quite like this, but sort of like this, to one of the points of the electromagnet and then send voltage through it, well, it ends up turning on and off constantly. That's because it energizes itself, but as it energizes itself, it turns itself off. Just a never ending cycle of turning itself on and off. So with what we now know about uni selectors, I went ahead and put this together. I've still got wood stain on my hands from wood staining this random bit of plywood to keep it cheap. All in all, this has come up to about 40 pounds altogether, I reckon, with both uni selectors. These 3D printed parts that are 3D printed on the Lulzbot Mini, 24 volts comes into the pins at the bottom of here. And then on one of these 30 pins is this resistor, and that goes down and into the electromagnet of this. So you'll notice that every time this arm passes this contact, this will move forwards. But why? Well, to answer this, we need to look at the other part of this project, and that is this. This is a circuit board that I designed that basically says, this old Tony, how cool is that? There's 140 LEDs, and the plan is to make these select through every single one of these LEDs like an electromechanical light chaser. The problem is, when this spins around, it only has 30 contacts, so it only selects between 30 LEDs. Which is fine if there was only 30 LEDs, but there is 140 right here. So that's why we have two uniselectors. So what this does is every time it completes a rotation, of 30 contacts, this flicks forwards one. And when this flicks forwards one, it's actually gonna select another row of contacts. So it goes ting, ting, ting. And that selects between five rows of 30. So that means this can sequence 150 LEDs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 30. Flicks down to the next row. Push it down. And when you let it go, So what we need to do now is wire 150 wires from here over to here. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, it's turned into one of those jobs when you think about it. The idea is really quite easy. So, oh yeah, you're just like soldering just, you know, like 200 wires. Yeah, yeah, you think about that and then you actually do it and you realise that you started soldering the wires into this this morning and now you look at the time, it's, it's 2.30 in the morning again. Oh, I think I'm halfway, I'm halfway. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crack through it. I'm really running out of time. I don't want to ruin Christmas for everyone. So I've really got to, got to get this cracking. So after soldering well into the night that night, I had to get it posted in the morning because I needed to give it at least three weeks or so to get there, which is lucky because I've just found out it only just turned up. So anyway, after that, check out these beauty shops because it's now done. The only thing to do now is to push the button a few times and, and, and enjoy it. So that's now over with this old Tony, but a package arrived a couple of days ago. To Sam from Tested. Oh, let's see what's inside. Oh, now it is starting to feel like Christmas now. This has traveled across the world. Holy moly. I can see a hand. What the? I'm, so, I'm starting to question if this actually was supposed to get through customs. Oh yeah. Oh. Whoa, what the deuce? No. So it's the back keyboard from hell from the Tested lot. And wow, this is quite a piece of art. I think in the art world, this would be classed as exquisite. I mean, even the creepy craftsmanship on the case alone is worth a secret Santa. Even the eyes on the doll heads move. We've got roosters playing bone harps on a fence or something. We've got serpents and scorpions eating loads of Camelot people. Look at the poor dude that's stuck in that puddle. Hi Sam, Jen, Mel and Katie here, dropping in with your YouTube Maker Secret Santa gift and thank you very much. We are artists, builders, engineers and makers of weird stuff which we document for Tested's YouTube channel. We were inspired by your Wonder Bible project and decided to go for a darkly biblical theme which led us to that infamous medieval Bosch painting, the Garden of Earthly Delights. In the hellscape side of the painting, there's some poor soul with a few bars of music painted on his naked bum. Fast forward to this millennium where a young music student transcribed the tune into modern notation. We were brainstorming on a rainy car ride one evening when the idea struck like lightning. We hope it delights you as much as it did us. Happy festival us and Merry New Year's and all that. Cheers Jen, Mel and Katie. Thank you very, very much. You haven't seen what's inside here yet, so let's have a look. I've seen it and it's blooming amazing. Are you ready? Bum ba da bum 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 bum. Oh yeah. That is just amazing, isn't it? They've used some really nice keyboard switches which make the bums have an impressively nice percussive sound to them even when they're not plugged in. The paintings are quite magnificent. If I could read notation, I would know exactly what was there, but I may need to ask somebody on that. Anyway, I'm gonna take this piece of artwork back and see how well it sings. <laughs> And I was thinking about this earlier. It wouldn't even matter if I could read uh, that notation because trying to transpose it into butts is a whole other challenge entirely. And I'm not sure whether there's any real specialists out there for this job, but it's okay. They've put the song onto this pebble dash buttock right here. So I can probably figure it out enough. <laughs> What I find quite funny about playing these butts is they are actually quite slidey and when you push your finger on them your finger sort of slides into the cracks. <laughs> the buttocks does have a tiny bit of latency but I'll just have to play before the note so I'm going to get a drum machine going and we'll do a little bit of a jam now. <laughs> bit hard to play it with the latency but I reckon if we press play on here sort of in the right tempo to the butt song from hell it might it might get a little vibe going let's give it a go
Absolutely blooming awesome, thank you very much. The tested lot really hit the nail on the head with the Bosch painting and every time I look at it, I actually see something different. If you want to see the video of them making it and also this old Tony receiving the electromechanical light chaser, well all of this year's YouTube Secret Santa videos are set up in a playlist. Uh, the link is below if you're not already on it. I've already started making another Uni Selector light chaser for this museum's not obsolete, which you'll be able to come and see and you'll also be able to come and see the Burt keyboard from hell over there if you ever want to pop over. Anyway, that's it from me. Go check out the other videos. Have a lovely time.